In the times of old, women were renowned for keeping and maintaining a large store of food and goods in their pantry. They prided themselves on their acquisitions. The feeding of their family was the old-fashioned homemaker's main mission. Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jacqueline. Today I'd like to talk to you guys about the art of pantrying. The old-fashioned homemaker kept a large garden and was skilled in the management of that garden. She would grow what was most useful, most productive, and most beneficial for nutrients and health. As a homemaker, I am thankful that my family's survival does not depend on my ability and strength in growing food. I acknowledge my poverty of skill and dedication outright. I do wish to advance greatly in the area of gardening for food. Becoming skilled in the garden and preservation of the subsequent harvest ought to become a wholehearted pursuit of mine. I want to cultivate the pantry of my home, making sure it is well stocked with the variety of things needed for the running of my home. This is my conscious attempt to reject convenience culture, even in my small way. Some ways I try to make a difference in my procurement is by growing what I can, shopping local, stocking up during sales, and traveling outside my immediate area to find nutritious, flavor-packed essentials from cultures other than my own. Some people groups focus on building nutrition, like probiotics, through primitive methods not practiced by today's homemakers. Things like kombucha and kimchi and sauerkraut are all important foods that aid in the nourishment of our bodies. When I first started looking into starting my pantry, I was met with all kinds of things that would not work for my climate. I live in Zone 8B, South Mississippi, with wet, humid springs, hot, humid summers, and mild, short winters. It doesn't make sense to have root cellars here. I don't even know of many people with basements. Those things are just not easy to come by, let alone stock. So that romantic idea of having a place to store ropes of onions and garlic and cases of unripe pears and squashes and pumpkins is not really feasible for me. So what is a Southern old fashioned woman to do? Well, I use those foods as fresh items only. I don't grow a large amount of these foods simply because the, hum the humid nature of my area, and specifically my home, will result in more loss than gain. Potatoes sprout so quickly. If I buy more, then I'm able to use up in a reasonable time. So in my case, I just purchase root vegetables as needed, and I prefer to grow my own herbs and things that can be canned easily, as well as growing fruits and plants for tea. This setup makes the most sense for my climate at home. I will also add that I live in a tiny cabin around 400 square feet, so space is at a premium. That does not mean I neglect keeping a pantry, though. The first part of pantrying is to stock it. Keep in mind, this is not hoarding, and it is not storing food away for an apocalypse. This food storage is what our meals are actually made from. That's the beauty of maintaining a working pantry, is the fact that it's completely customized to your life. Your pantry does not have to look like mine or like anyone else's for that matter. You also don't have to live on a farm or have a traditional root cellar to embrace the art of pantrying. You may have to get creative and step out of your comfort zone and create new habits, but almost everyone in some way can return to the time old art of building up a pantry. As we build our pantry, we need to make sure we are not being wasteful. It's so easy to get inspired and overwhelmed with all the canning recipes you find on the internet. They usually have some new method of preparation or added in a funky new ingredient. Either way, you now have 45 jars of fireweed peach applesauce. <laughs> Has your family ever eaten that much applesauce in a year? Just be cautious of trying too many new things at once. Some of my favorite YouTubers share their tried and true recipes, and all of a sudden, I've been influenced to do as they have done. So I go to the grocery store, buying the ingredients to make the item they suggested, only I tend to watch homemakers with seven, eight, even nine children. I only have one child. 
So now I'm stuck with five meals worth of food and new ingredients, and I don't even know if we actually like the recipe. I have to find some more new recipes to use up the collection of the new ingredients I purchased. Like, hello, who actually uses fennel and herbs de Provence regularly? Not me. Ugh, all of these new extra items and meals will tax my brain and cause me to want to quit altogether. I also want to caution you about stockpiling junk foods like processed and convenience foods. Remember, the idea is to get ingredients. Of course, I know that sometimes a lady needs some emergency quick meals on hand. By all means, get that. But I'm talking about having ingredients to prepare anything you want. I find that a pantry that looks like the inner shelves of, of a grocery store and not like the outer rim of the store is poor stewardship. Sometimes a woman may spend hours and hours canning food and maybe not even use it. Maybe it's because she doesn't know how to use the ingredients, or she's scared it's going to taste bad, or it just looks unappetizing. That's one reason why I don't can a lot of produce. I don't think it looks great, and I don't like that overcooked texture. Therefore, a lot of my produce is frozen fresh instead. That way, I can cook it to my specifications when needed. However, I do believe in canning broths and meats for soup or chili, and also sliced fruit. They're generally perfectly fine as canned. Remember, this is not a prepper pantry. Those pantries are stockpiled with noodles, chips, bottled water, and batteries. This is a working homemaker pantry. The idea is to have on hand all the ingredients necessary to make the majority of meals your family regularly eats. This will spark creativity in you as you realize your core staples aren't like anyone else's. For instance, some of my core staples that I can incorporate into a plethora of meals include cream cheese, garlic butter, and pepper spice. I find that we use those ingredients almost every single day. Had I not thought hard about the kind of pantry I needed, I would have never considered that these are now my new staples. As you work through building your pantry, you will gain so many new skills, like knowing exactly when the apples in the fridge will start to go soft, knowing that the small amount of cheese left is perfect for two omelets, and how to freeze leftover buttermilk from that one time you processed 18 cartons of heavy cream, you found deeply discounted at the grocery store into butter. That was a lot of fun. Did you guys do that? <laughs> In no time, you'll be adding diced red onion and hot sauce to your pickled eggs to make them taste more flavorful and turn slightly pink in color. It becomes a bit of a waltz the homemaker will perform as she uses up and remixes all of her ingredients. She'll probably stumble upon a new family favorite to add to her collection of recipes. This very dance is the art of pantry. That's it for today, guys. I'm so glad that you joined me today, and I will see you guys next time here at the homestead. Bye.